I'm in New York. Where are you? Hi, Millie. I'm super excited for the sushi party next week. I'll see you there. Uh, hi, Liana. Um, I don't want to be rude, but I don't think we invited you. Yes, well, I overheard you talking about it in the park the other day. You really managed to get a reservation at Kobayashi Sushi? They have the best sushi in the city! And since you invited all your friends, I thought I'd come along too. Um, well, I'm sorry, Liana, but we already made the reservation, and we could only get a table for eight, so, um, maybe next time? Oh, don't be silly! You can call them and change the number of guests! What's one more person? Oh, and be sure to tell everyone else I'll be coming too! Liana, I don't know how else to say this, but I don't want you to come. What? Why? Because you never pay. Every time we've invited you out to dinner in the past, you eat five times more than anyone else, but then when the bill comes along, you suddenly realize you lost your wallet or forgot to go to the bank or something. So someone else has to spot you the money, and you always say you'll pay it back, but you never do. Hmm, I don't remember that at all. Well, I do remember last month. You heard my family was having a barbecue at the beach, so you showed up unannounced with your whole family and started eating everything you could get your hands on, and then you leave without even helping us clean up. Don't tell me you forgot about that, Liana. What do you mean, showed up unannounced? We just so happened to be at the same beach at the same time as all. We didn't eat that much. I did feel bad about not helping clean up. But your grill is so complex. It has so many pieces and parts and odds and ends. I was worried about breaking it. I wouldn't want to do that to you, Millie. Yeah, well, you had no problem taking the food we prepared for ourselves. You ate half the hamburgers, most of the hot dogs, and all of the potato salad. Did we really eat that much? You'll have to forgive me. My five children do have quite an appetite. The older ones are already in middle school, and growing children need their nutrition. So feed them at your house. And besides, you ate more than any of them. And this isn't just me. You've done the same thing to the other girls too. We're tired of you taking advantage of us, Liana. We don't want to be your friends anymore. We're never inviting you to anything ever again. What? How could you? You're kicking me out of the mom's group? I mean, honestly, you were never that close to any of us. When have we ever directly invited you to anything? Never! I didn't even give you my phone number. You got it from the emergency contacts list at school. I wouldn't have had to do that if you would have simply given me your number when I asked! Now come on! I want to have some good sushi! Let me go with you! Why didn't you just go to the restaurant with your own family? Why do we have to take you along with us? My husband can't afford it! The only time I can ever go to a decent restaurant is when I go with you! So it's like I said, you just want to come along so you can eat without paying. I can't believe you, Liana. I didn't say that out loud. Liana, for the last time, you're not coming with us. And please, don't ever contact me again. Hi, Millie. I got to the restaurant a bit early, so I'll be waiting at the table for everyone. What? What are you talking about? What restaurant are you at? The sushi restaurant, Kobayashi Sushi. I'll order for everyone so the food will be at the table when you get here. I told you I was coming, didn't I? Yes, and I told you not to come. I was very clear when I said you weren't invited. No, you said you didn't want me to come. And you said I wasn't invited for the last time. You didn't say anything about this time. You'll have to be more careful with your wording next time. You have got to be kidding me. I've never met anyone like you before. I was as explicit as I possibly could be about not wanting you to come, and yet here you are. <laughs> you won't get rid of me that easily. Besides, my husband and kids have been looking forward to eating sushi all week. Oh look, our first order just arrived. Gotta go, Millie. You'd better get here fast before it's all gone. Millie, where are you all? We're all so excited to see you. And all the sushi we ordered is gone. We're completely stuffed. All seven of us. Uh, Liana? 
We're already here. We've been here for almost half an hour now. You are? I can't see you anywhere. Oh well. Like I said, we're all stuffed to the gills, so we'll be going home now. Oh, and since the reservation was in your name, you'll be picking up the check, right? <laughs> I'll pay you back. Eventually. That's not gonna work this time, Liana. You're going to have to pay the bill yourself. No can do, Millie. I seem to have left my wallet at home. You invited me, it's your party. So take responsibility and pay the bill, won't you? It's only a few thousand dollars. You should be fine. First things first, I did not invite you. And what do you mean few thousands? How much did you eat? Well, between the seven of us, about 50 plates each. <laughs> 50 plates? All seven of you? You ate 350 plates of sushi? <laughs> well, yes. My kids have quite an appetite. The sushi was so good. They just couldn't stop. <laughs> That's... wow. Kobayashi starts at $10 a plate. If you ate 350 plates, the bill's gotta be at least 4 to 5 grand. Have you seen the bill yet? It just came, actually. $6,000. And it was worth every penny. <laughs> $6,000? You ate $6,000 worth of sushi without intending to pay for it? Oh, don't be so dramatic. You can split it between all of you. <laughs> Thanks for the treat, Millie. Next time's on me, I promise. <laughs> This is no laughing matter, Liana. I can't believe you expected us to cover a 6,000 bill for you. Are you out of your mind? Don't worry, you know I'm true to my word. I'll pay you back, I promise. Shall I tell the waitress you'll be paying with cash or credit? You've gone off the deep end, Liana. You are one of the most selfish, insufferable people I've ever met. I'm not your damn ATM. Millie, 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 I don't think you're my ATM. We're friends, aren't we? Think of all we've been through together. Friends don't stick their friends with $6,000 bills. Do be a dear and hurry along, will you? We can't leave until you pay for the meal. We're going shopping on Michigan Avenue after this. Don't keep us waiting. Wait. Michigan Avenue? Are you in Chicago? Yes, we are. Why do you ask? That's where the restaurant is. Where else would we be? What's gotten into you all of a sudden? Um, oh, oh boy. Liana, did you go to the Kobayashi Sushi on Michigan Avenue in Chicago? Yes, of course we did. You said you were going to Kobayashi's Sushi, didn't you? Oh boy, well, Liana, I really hate to tell you this, but you're at the wrong place. What? We're not at the Kobayashi Sushi's in Chicago. We're at the Kobayashi Sushi in New York. What? New York? Yep, my uncle runs a hotel here, and they're hard up for guests these days, so he gave us a great deal on a room. He said we could invite the other moms from the group too. We've been here since yesterday. You went to New York? Why didn't you tell me about that? You didn't ask, and besides, you weren't invited. I was about to lose it. I thought you followed us all the way to New York. You're terrible! You tricked me! Tricked you? You overheard our conversation and invited yourself to our party, and you want to blame me for you going to the wrong restaurant? It's your fault for not telling me about the vacation! How could you do this to your best friend? How many times do I have to tell you? I don't want to hang out with you. You're not my friend. How could you be so cruel to me? You know I have seven mouths to feed. Do you expect me to support them all on my husband's salary? Friends don't abandon their friends in their time of need. You are not my friend. And when have you ever helped anybody? All you ever do is take advantage of us. You're nothing but a parasite. A what? 
How dare you! It's the truth, Liana. But anyway, we're not at the same restaurant, so I won't be paying your bill. You won't? Wait, who's going to pay the bill, then? It's $6,000! I can't pay it, and if you won't, then who will? Not us, we're in New York. And no, we're not flying back to Chicago to pay your bill for you, so don't even ask. You're going to have to get yourself out of this mess. Millie, please. I don't have $6,000. I can't pay this. I don't care. It's not my problem. Figure it out. Millie, wait. Please, you have to help me. If I don't pay, they're going to have me arrested. I have young children, Millie. You're a mother. Don't you have any compassion for my children? Well, yes, I do feel pretty awful for your kids. They got stuck with a complete moron like you for a mom. But nope, not gonna help you. Oh, no. So anyway, we're in the middle of our dinner, so I'm gonna go. Good night, Liana. Hope you enjoyed the sushi. Liana and her husband freaked out, left their kids at the table and ran out of the building. The restaurant had already called the police, though and they got caught right outside the front door. Since they never had any intention to pay for the meal in the first place, I don't see how they'll avoid jail time. So they'll have plenty of time to think about what they have done. Hopefully Liana learns her lesson this time. Oh, and her kids were all taken in by Child Protective Services. I guess Liana's sister and her husband are taking them in. Hopefully her sister's smarter than she is. As for us, we had a great time in New York, and the sushi was wonderful. Hi, Emily. What's up? Mika, I'm glad I could finally get hold of you. I left you so many messages. Why haven't you returned my calls? Why didn't you come to Dad's funeral? I told you the time and venue, didn't I? Oh, my bad. I'm not home right now. Where are you then? I'm on vacation with my boyfriend in Hawaii. Hawaii? How long have you been gone? Ah, uh, About like 10 days or so? Wait, 10 days ago? That's when I called you about Dad's condition getting worse. How could you go on vacation at a time like this? You haven't even gone to see Dad once while he's been in the hospital. What's the matter with you? What was I supposed to do? This was the only week my boyfriend was free this month. Are you kidding me? I couldn't just cancel on him. He might have dumped me. Do you expect him to dump you for going to see your dying father? I don't know, maybe. Oh, never mind. You missed his funeral, but you at least need to come by the house and pay your respects. I know you're not his biological daughter, but he's still your father. Ugh, I really don't want to. Mika! But even if I could, once I get back, I'm going with my boyfriend to Miami. What? Another vacation? What's the matter? Don't like Miami? It's not about Miami. Mika, let me ask you something. How do you afford all these trips? You only work part-time, and you're always asking me for money. Oh, don't worry. That won't be a problem anymore. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, don't play dumb. But for real, I won't be asking you for money anymore. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Still, you need to come by the house. My husband and I are staying here for the next few weeks, and then our aunt is going to come and look after the house until it gets sold. Gotcha. I'll stop by once I get back from Miami. You had better mean that, Mika. Mika, it's Emily again. It's been two weeks since you said you'd come to the house, and you haven't come. You promised, Mika. Oh, shoot. Sorry. I'm on vacation, actually. Wait, what? You're still not back from Miami? Nah, I'm not in Miami anymore. I went on another vacation with my boyfriend. Mika, are you serious? How are you going on all these vacations? Where are you getting the money? And just what exactly does your boyfriend do for a living? I mean, it's not really my business, but is he even working? How does he afford all these trips? You mean his job? Yeah, where does he work? I mean, he must have hit his limit on paid time off by now. Even if he's working remotely, how can he keep up with his work if he's constantly jet-setting across the country? You must not have gone to your job in a month. Are you for real? I figured you'd be smart enough to get it by now. But man, you're just completely oblivious, huh? Oblivious? Oblivious to what? <laughs> Unreal. Gotta go, my boyfriend is calling me. Talk to you later. Mika, wait, you still need to come by the house. How long are you gonna keep blowing us off? 
Hey, Emily, it's Tim. I'm sorry to message you so late. Couldn't you talk? Hi, Tim. Thanks for coming to my dad's funeral the other day. Not a problem. I was glad to come. Your dad was a great uncle to me. He helped me out a lot back in the day. I just wish I had more time to spend with him. Don't worry, Tim. You were a great nephew. I know how much you meant to him. So, about your dad. I've been debating whether or not I should tell you this, but I think you deserve to know. What's the matter? It's about Mika. Oh no, what did my sister do this time? Well, I started law school recently, and I see Mika from time to time at the train station on my way to class. Wow, really? Yeah, I think she probably lives around the same area, but um, every time I see her, she's with a different guy. What? Are you saying... Uh... And with each guy, she, well, she seems really close to him. Always holding hands, hugging, kissing, so I'm, I'm worried, well, I'm kind of worried if she has multiple boyfriends. You think she's cheating on all of them? Probably, yeah. And some of them have been uh, quite a bit older than her. Like this guy the other day, he had to be in his 50s and he was wearing a wedding ring. I'm kind of concerned about her. I see. And maybe I'm jumping to conclusions, and if so, I'm sorry, but like I said, I, I thought you should know. Thanks for telling me, Tim. I think I'll ask Mika directly about that tomorrow. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you out. I haven't passed a bar exam yet, but I do know a thing or two about the law. Thanks a lot, Tim. I'll let you know if I need to take you up on that. Hey, Mika, do you have a minute? Oh, Emily! Perfect timing! I was just about to message you. About what? When am I getting my share? Share? Share of what? The inheritance? What else? What? I need money. Fast. Money? My boyfriend's wife found out I was sleeping with her husband, and she's suing me. What? So you really were dating an older married man? Wait, you knew about that? Tim said he's seen you at the station, and that you're with a different guy every time, and one of them was wearing a wedding ring. Ah, <laughs> guess I'm busted. This isn't funny. I wish I could have known sooner. I could have stopped you. How many men are you dating right now? Uh, right now? Like, seven-ish? Seven? Yeah, I mean, fooling around with married men is like super thrilling. <laughs> oh no, are all the seven of them married? Yeah, uh... Mika, what are you thinking? What were you planning on doing if their wives found out? Yeah, about that. All seven of their wives found out at right about the same time. <laughs> All of them? One of them hired a private investigator, and the PI found out about the other six guys while investigating me. So now they're all going after me together, like they're the Justice League. <laughs> what a bunch of losers. They're just jealous their husbands liked me more. <laughs> Mika, do you have any idea how serious your situation is? Think about it, you're going to have to pay damages to all seven women. Yeah, they told me as much. Have you reached a settlement yet? Yep, a total of $300,000. $300,000? Yeah, some of them added punitive damages because they were pregnant, I guess. So, it's a little bit more than I thought it would be. You certainly seem to be at peace about the whole thing. How are you going to pay that off? You only work part-time and you've been constantly going on vacations for the last month. What exactly is the game plan for you, Mika? <laughs> Seriously, Emily, how are you so clueless? What are you talking about? I'm going to use my inheritance. What? I kind of figured I'd get caught eventually from the start, to be honest. But since I knew Dad's inheritance was coming soon, I thought, hey, might as well enjoy myself. Is that why you've been so loose with money lately? Yep. Even after taxes, Dad's estate has got to be worth at least three mil, right? And since Mom's already dead, that means we get all of that. So half of that's mine, 1.5 million. I'll still be sitting pretty even after I pay off the 300k settlement. Is that why you've been so loose with money lately? Bingo! So, when am I getting the money? I need it pretty soon. By tomorrow, if possible. Uh, Mika? I told them I'd pay the 300k settlement in a lump sum. They knocked off 50k for that. You're not getting any inheritance, Mika. Huh? Wait, I'm not? No, Mika, you're not. Ah, uh, <laughs> you really had me going there for a second, Emily. <laughs> Good one. 
I'm not joking. So, let me know when you make the transfer, okay? Bye. Mika, listen to me. Hey, Emily. Any updates on my money? I just called the bank. They said the transfer hadn't come yet. I tried to tell you, you're not getting any inheritance. Not a single penny. Wait, I don't believe you. Are you trying to keep all Dad's money for yourself? I'm not gonna let you get away with that! Mika, wake up! This was your own fault, remember? This was what you chose! What do you mean? I talked to our cousin Tim last night. He's going to law school. My dad married your mom after you were born. You're not his biological daughter. Yeah, and? And Dad never legally adopted you. So? When you were 20, Dad asked you about legally becoming his daughter and do you remember what you said to him? Nah, sounds like a pain in the ass. What's that gotta do with my inheritance? Well, long story short, since Dad never legally adopted you, you don't have any legal right to his inheritance. No way! No one ever told me that! Yes, Mika, Dad told you himself. He told you that you won't get any inheritance if he doesn't adopt you, and you still said no. You're lying. This is all a trick to steal my share of the money. I'll give you my dad's lawyer phone number. Ask him yourself. Or could you know, Google it. It's pretty common knowledge. Unreal. So wait, what am I supposed to do about the settlement? How should I know? This is your problem, not mine. Can you give me 300k? You want me to give you $300,000? You're his only daughter, so you got all of his stuff, right? You're getting three million dollars. You can throw me a measly 300k. I have to pay the settlement by the end of this week. I'll give you my bank info, so wire me the money today, okay? No. No? I'm not wasting a single penny of my inheritance to get you out of the mess you got yourself into. You cheated with seven men at the same time knowing full well you were gonna get sued. Thinking dad's money was gonna bail you out? What kind of person does that? Come on, Emily! We're sisters, right? We may not be blood-related, but we've been sisters for ten years! So please, help me out here, okay? Please, you're my only hope! Not on your life! Please! After that, Mika showed up at my house just about every night for a few weeks, banging on the door and begging me for money. Once I contacted the police and got a restraining order, though, she finally left me alone. As for me, once all dad's affairs were set in order, I transferred to a company on the other side of the country. Thankfully, my husband was already working from home, so he was very understanding about the move. Seems like I'll finally be able to settle down and relax for the first time since dad passed. I also sold my dad's house, and a new family moved in a few weeks ago. Now, about my sister, she managed to get a loan for the 300k dollar settlement. But the guy she borrowed from was, well, a loan shark. She stiffed him, of course, so she had to change her name and flee the state. I doubt I'll be hearing from her again anytime soon. Hey, sis, what's up? So, are you going to take me along on that long-awaited honeymoon? <laughs> Of course, it's going to be all expenses paid. <laughs> that would include travel, accommodations, and let's not forget souvenirs. Oh, that part is what I'm super excited about. Oh, boy, oh boy, I can't wait. Oh, you really lucked out, sis. Got yourself a filthy rich dude. Mm. Thanks, sis. <laughs> this is going to be a blast. Oh, what the hell are you blabbering on and on about, Cindy? Sheesh. Didn't I tell you the thing had been postponed? Barry's grandfather died recently. I thought I told you. But the wedding went without a hitch. Like I said, he died right afterwards. I explained this all to everyone at dinner last week. You were there, right? Oh, come on, sis. The guy was just an old geezer. No need for you to cancel the honeymoon. I mean... This is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Who cancels that? The whole thing sounds so hokey. To be honest, I can't believe it. <laughs> Barry's grandfather practically raised him. His parents were both working and hardly ever home, so he was like his dad. It's like he lost his dad. It was devastating to him. We couldn't very well just off and go on our honeymoon so soon after Grandpa died. 
It just didn't seem like the decent thing to do. I really don't get it, to be honest. And what's more, a honeymoon is a special occasion, something that married couples do. I can't understand why you would even ask to come along. Oh, yeah, well, you really don't have to call it a honeymoon, just a family trip. Then it's okay, right? If you guys are paying, I mean, I don't care if it's a honeymoon or a family trip or whatever. As long as you foot the bill, I'm game. You never change, do you, Cindy? If it's free, you want it. You're an adult now. Grow up, would you? You're a disgrace. You're marrying pretty soon yourself, right, Cindy? Like, next month. Huh? <laughs> but Barry's rich. You have money. You use it. Uh, what's wrong with that? What's this abnormal obsession with money, for God's sake? Buy me dinner, and I'll tell you. You're beyond hope. If you want to go on a trip, save some money and go by yourself. We're not taking you on any honeymoon. Huh? Oh, come on, sis! That's that. You're not welcome. End of story. Okay, I'm busy. See you. Hey, sis. What's up? Man, the weather over here is super nice. But it looks like it may rain a bit by the time you guys get here. Hmm, yeah. Getting a bit cloudy. Better hurry. Huh? Is that you, Cindy? What do you want? Like I keep telling you, I'm joining you on your honeymoon. Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> like I said, joining you, but I came ahead. I'm busy shopping, so hurry up before I buy too much. <laughs> Cindy, didn't you hear what I was saying last month? The honeymoon has been canceled and we have no plans as of yet to go. Barry's busy with work now and we have to schedule it another time. Yeah, I know, I know. But I bet you didn't know. I saw you over at mom's place yesterday. Saw that you took home that travel bag. The one you always take on trips. <laughs> yeah, so I know you were just putting me on. The honeymoon was not canceled after all. <laughs> Got you, sis. I knew you had scheduled the trip from today. And if I said I was coming along, you would, of course, not agree to that. So I took matters into my own hands and came straight here beforehand. <laughs> Didn't think that far, did you, sis? So what time do you guys plan on getting here? It's getting kind of late. You're already on the plane, right? Oh, or are you already in the taxi headed to the hotel? Uh, no. That travel bag is for the trip to Grandpa's place. Have to work out all the estate stuff with his lawyer. The meeting is scheduled for two or three days. You know, with all of Barry's relatives living in various places, Aunt Marge is even coming in from London. It'll be good to meet all of Barry's relatives. In Florida. Huh? Florida? You're not serious. Yeah, I am actually. As a matter of fact, we just arrived. Uh, Florida is like nowhere near Niagara Falls. That was where you booked your honeymoon, right? Yeah, that's right, but we canceled all that last month. No cancellation charges or anything. No problem there. Huh? You're kidding me, right? You don't mean the hotel too, do you? Of course, we canceled last month. What? You're not serious. What am I going to do? I have no idea. Besides, what concern is it of yours? What do you have to do with our honeymoon? I said I was going on the honeymoon, remember? I said I was going ahead of you. I was going to stay in the same room as you guys. Just trying to be considerate and save money. <laughs> Excuse me? I was looking forward to staying in the suite room. Well, I mean, they told me that even if you guys showed up, there was plenty of room for like four people. Ah, uh, I'm speechless. Listen up, Cindy. Even if we were there, we would never, and I mean, we would never let you stay in the same hotel room on our honeymoon. Are you nuts? 
Besides, the honeymoon was canceled. How could they let you stay there? We canceled that. Are you serious? Okay, if that's how you want to play it, I'm going to use my last remaining option. Uh, option? What option are you talking about, Cindy? The option to make you see the light. My last resort. Sorry, I have no idea what you're getting at. I'm currently at an expensive restaurant. The course is 500 per person. I'm here with a friend. I'm going to use your credit card to charge for the both of us. Total $1,000. Huh? Why do you have my credit card? Oh, you're not talking about the one I lost yesterday, are you? Was that you? Did you take that, Cindy? Surprise! <laughs> when you came over and picked up that travel bag, when you were busy digging it out of the garage, we swiped it out of your purse. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> See ya! Thanks for dinner! Hey, sis! Brenda! <laughs> Pick up, would you? I'm at the checkout counter. The credit card is no good. It's getting rejected. What's going on? I tried to tell you earlier. Obvious, isn't it? I canceled that card as soon as I found out it was gone. I thought I dropped it somewhere. Can't have some jerk using it. Why would you go and do that? You mean, the card's no good? Yes, as soon as I saw it was missing, I contacted their emergency line and canceled it. Tell me you're joking, Brenda. The normal thing to do is cancel it right away. You can't be serious. I was supposed to pay this full course meal. A thousand bucks! How could you do this? I had to go to the bank and withdraw money and pay the restaurant. Ugh, this is all your fault, Brenda. I can't afford to pay one thousand bucks. I needed the money. Uh, hey, Cindy. I was thinking... I couldn't help but notice. What? What is it? Are you on this trip with someone? Huh? What are you talking about? You mentioned that you were having dinner with someone. 500 bucks times two, you know? Who are you with? You mentioned the hotel suite too. Four of us? Is someone you're traveling with footing the bill? Uh, yeah, my boyfriend. You know, the guy I've been seeing for some time now? My boyfriend? The guy I'm gonna marry? <sighs> what about him? That seems kind of strange. Uh, what do you mean strange? <sighs> What's so strange about that? That's what normal soon-to-be-married people do, right? No, it's not that. Your boyfriend, at least the guy I know, Randy, if I recall, he said he had to work despite it being a holiday today. Weird that he would be there with you. Huh? What are you talking about? When we went to the airport to hop on the plane for Florida, we met Randy at the airport lounge. Yeah, he was in his business suit, looked kinda a little unhappy about having to go on that business trip. Guess it was important. Uh, really? Yeah, how nice. Who are you on this trip with, Cindy? I was, you know... You're kidding me, right? Your wedding is planned for next month, and you're on a trip with some guy? Really? Uh, no. You got this all wrong. I said boyfriend, but, but I really meant just a friend. J just a misuse of the word. Nothing serious. Like, you know, girlfriend or school friend. <laughs> you know what I mean. Just a good friend that happens to be a guy. So you have a fiancé, marriage is set for next month, and you go on a trip with a friend that happens to be a guy and you happen to stay in the same hotel room. Uh, right. You know what? Stuff like this is normal in this day and age. You're getting old, sis. <laughs> no, not normal, Cindy. Downright abnormal. Oh, yeah. You said you were going to tag along with your boyfriend on our honeymoon and stay in the same hotel suite? That was your plan, right? Did you even stop to think that we would see this guy and... Do I really have to explain this to you? Jeez, Cindy! I figured after you guys fell asleep, I would sneak him in and 
you know, in the morning I would just shoo him out before you guys woke up. Figured it would work fine. You'd never find our... You really think that would have worked? Did you really want to go that far just to get a free trip? I just can't understand what's going on in that little head of yours. Uh, Brenda? Sis? Could you keep this quiet? I mean, from Randy. You really think I'm gonna go along with your little love charade? Of course I'm telling him! Uh, please! I beg you! You know Randy? He works at a major corporation, and that corporation is owned by his dad, and he's slated to take over when he retires. Ugh, I finally found a super promising guy. <laughs> Don't go screwing it up for me, Brenda! A uh, little too late for that, Cindy. Barry is calling him right now. Excuse me? No way. <laughs> You're kidding, <laughs> right? Yep, looks like he's explaining the situation to him right before my eyes. Hold it a sec. <laughs> seems like we didn't have to tell him anything. Huh? What do you mean? Well, it seems your little escapade with your so-called boyfriend, he already knows. Yeah, he knows who this guy is. This guy you're having an affair with. You're joking. <laughs> I know when you're pulling my leg, <laughs> Brenda. Oh, yeah, when we met up with Randy at the airport, he wasn't going to work. He was actually headed to where you are, with a private investigator. He plans to confront you guys in the act. You see him around anywhere? Confront us? What do you mean, confront us? He's on the phone with Barry now. He says he spotted you guys. Nice little coffee shop. Uh... Randy terminated our engagement. He wants compensation for screwing up our engagement. Ugh, help me out, Brenda. I don't have that kind of money. He also wants me to pay for the wedding, which was canceled. It's only a month away, so they want the whole enchilada. Can you believe it? Oh, I can't believe it. I mean, a month before should have at least been like, what, 50%? But everything? Oh, come on. It's all your fault, Brenda. It's because you didn't take us on the trip. You had to cancel your honeymoon. So, pay up. Get Barry to pay. Ugh, he's rolling in the bucks anyway. Come on. Just this once, please. Oh, your little sister is in trouble here. Oh, help me out for God's sake. Oh, mom and dad won't lift a finger. In fact, they kicked me out of the house. Oh, now I have to find an apartment. Ugh, that's right. This is your fault, sis. Find me a place to stay. I prefer that tower apartment downtown. Ooh, yeah, now I could live there. Ooh, I'll find a new guy. Oh, yeah, top floor if you can. Uh, Cindy? You and Barry are going to put me up in a nice condo in the city. Oh, this is going to be great. Okay, waiting for your call. Remember... Top floor. You have gone totally bonkers. Cindy, high rise condo apartment in your dreams. Huh? Come on, sis. Brenda. Barry's rich. You guys can afford this? Your poor little sister is in trouble here. Help me out, Brenda. Please. Come on, sis. Just this one last time. Sorry, I'm gonna have to block you, Cindy. See ya! Why? Why would you block your only sister? Oh, come on, Brenda, give me a break! Cindy's opportunistic ways, this habit of leeching off others, I think it comes from my grandmother who partially raised her. She really took Cindy under her wing when she was growing up. She taught her to take advantage of everyone around, whether it be money or some advantage she should gain. I guess it really had an effect on her. Once she found out she couldn't get any money out of me or my folks, she went to her boyfriend. But this guy, a real piece of work himself, apparently had a fiancé himself. He immediately dropped her and bailed out. Too bad. Seems like they were made for each other. She soon found out nobody wanted anything to do with her. But she wasn't about to give up. She schemed to get some rich guy that she could leech off. 
But although she did find a fairly rich guy, he turned out to be married, and in the end had to pay compensation to the wife for causing a rift in their marriage. Up to her ears in debt, all she was left with was to use her body to make ends meet. Hey, Derek. How you feeling? I heard the surgery went okay. Everything okay? Yeah. Hey, Miranda. Yeah. I just woke up about two hours ago. The doctor explained everything a while ago. Now I'm just sitting bored out of my wits. Sorry I wasn't there to be by your side. Must have felt a little neglected. I was a bit busy, and besides, I just couldn't walk into a hospital under the circumstances. Don't worry about it. I'm fine. So, what happened? How's it going to go from here? I called the doctor, but he wouldn't tell me a thing. Will you be able to walk okay after a little bit of therapy? Yeah, about that. There was some explanation before the surgery. Apparently, the leg is irreparable. He said I would probably be wheelchair-bound for the rest of my life. No way. Th that can't be right. The doctor said all my nerves and stuff are shot. No chance of them working again. I remember the front seat of the car. It was flat as a pancake. You know what? I was ready for it. I mean, emotionally, I kind of knew I would never walk again. But gotta be honest, reality hurts. So, uh, what happens now? How are you going to live? Well, not like I used to, for sure. Gotta change my ways, I guess. Probably I have to fix up the house. Need to make it barrier-free. Ramps, handles, that kind of stuff. Probably have to do major work on the bathroom and shower stall, too. Probably won't be able to drive a car anymore. I was in sales, so probably won't be able to continue working. Not this job, at least. Hopefully the company will keep me on in one shape or another. So I don't think I have to worry about losing my job. But all that experience I gained, it won't be any good to me anymore. The doc will probably explain everything to you about living at home and all. I hate to say this, but this may be hard on you going forward, Miranda. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't do this. Yeah, this is not me. I, I can't do this. Excuse me? I said I can't. Uh, I could never do that. I mean, nursing stuff? <laughs> Taking care of handicapped people? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to say this, but... <sighs> I can't. I want a divorce. Wait a sec. Excuse me? Divorce? Are you serious? That's the only option. I just can't do this. I can't nurse a handicapped guy. I'm sorry. Do you think I could change your bedpan? We're the same age. Oh, no way I could do that. Sorry. Oh, and to think I would have to do it for the rest of my life? For years? No, never! Ugh, this is not happening. Ugh, just thinking about it makes me sick. Am I hearing you correctly? What the hell do you mean? And about your job. Can you really continue in the condition? They may keep you on for a while, but you never know. They may fire you after a while. What are you going to do then? Just live off your folks? And you really think you can find a new job? Like that? Uh, do you realize how much it would cost for your therapy? A and renovating the house alone will cost a fortune. No way I'm giving up my life. No, future. Just being poor. Uh, I'm still young for crying out loud. Come on, Miranda. Calm down, would you? I can certainly understand you panicking about this whole thing, but... Why do you have to be so negative about it all? I'm the victim here. I shouldn't be the one that's depressed. Anyway, I have no intention of babysitting you forever. <sighs> I'm going to fill out the divorce papers, so I'll leave it on the kitchen table. When you get home, sign it and submit it ASAP, okay? I won't be there. Don't come looking for me either. Hold it a second, Miranda. You can't just decide to get divorced just like that. I've already made up my mind, so please, let's just get this over with. And get your folks or friends or whatever to get you home, would you? I can't do it. That's it for me.
goodbye. Hey, Derek. I said hi to you today. <laughs> Why do you ignore me? I went out of my way to say hello to you for Pete's sake. Oh, was that you, Miranda? I had no idea it was you. You've changed. Yeah, well, I recognized you right away. <laughs> I spotted this little guy sitting there with a bunch of other businessmen in suits. I took a closer look and there you were, sitting in your wheelchair. Well, it's been three years. Have you gotten used to moving around in your wheelchair? <laughs> yeah, I've gotten pretty good at it. Don't need much help to get around, which is great. How about you, Miranda? You look, you know, your clothes and makeup sort of flashier than I remember, and your tummy looked kind of big. Did you get remarried? Uh, no, we're not married yet, but we've been living together for the past year or so. We plan to officially tie the knot after the baby is born. Yeah? Well, congratulations. Uh, I'm really happy now. Nice guy, baby on the way. Oh boy, did I make the right decision. Oh, I can't imagine what my life would be like if I hadn't divorced you. Being in that wheelchair and all, I bet you're doing some sort of filing work, right? Uh, to be honest, you look totally out of place among those businessmen. In contrast to you, my guy, you know how much he makes? He's got an annual salary of over a million dollars. <laughs> you would never measure up to him. What the hell is this? Did you contact me just to treat me with contempt? If that's the case, goodbye. Come on, Derek. Just kidding around. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I just wanted to share some of our joy and happiness with you. That's all. Uh, you wouldn't believe my future husband. He's a real catch. He works at Conrad Industries. I'm sure you've heard of the... Uh, you mean Conrad Corporation? Yeah, you know, that huge multinational corporation. Anybody working in business knows this company. It's a huge company. You know, if you're looking for work, I could ask my guy. I'm sure he'll find something for you. <laughs> Oh, he could probably get you a job doing some kind of desk work. It's a big company. I'm sure there's something for you. I mean, truth be told, they have to hire certain types of people. You know what I mean? Just ask for Andrew Sutton at the HR department at Conrad Corporation. They might find you something. <laughs> you never know. You may be of use to them. You know, image-wise. <laughs> uh... Hold on a second. Did you say Andrew Sutton? Is he your boyfriend? This Andrew Sutton? Uh, what? Do you know him or something? Oh, I can't believe this. I didn't realize he was so famous around here. Yeah, he's one of our lower ranking employees. Uh huh? <laughs> Excuse me? What do you mean by that lower ranking employee? You said his name was Andrew, right? Sutton? Yeah, I know him. Pretty well, as a matter of fact. He just got recruited and is currently working under me at my company. Uh, wait. What? What are you talking about? What is this about your company? Yeah, it's a long story, but... You know my last job? There was no place for me there, so I quit. After that... I joined my uncle's company. My uncle's single, so he was looking for someone to take over the company. To make a long story short, he heard I quit and asked me to take over for him as president of the company. That company is, well, Conrad Corporation. Uh, <laughs> no way. You're making all this up to get back at me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you telling me you're the CEO of Conrad Corporation? Yeah, well, it's only been a couple of years, and I'm still learning the ropes. Oh yeah, this guy, Andrew Sutton, I know him well. We just recruited him this year. But I hate to say this, but I really don't hear anything positive about his performance so far. On the first day of work, he arrived three hours late. 
he would say he was going out to meet with a client, but actually, he was at some club having fun with some girls. Obviously, with an attitude like that, well, work performance suffers and, how should I put this, gets pretty crappy. I really don't understand why HR even hired the guy. Well, he hasn't been here long, still in the trial period. Probably end with that. Uh, uh, wait a second. Let me get this straight. You said he got recruited this year, right? Uh, he said he's been at the company for like 10 years. He said everyone looks up to him, that he's really busy with clients, getting new clients all the time, one of your top salespeople. He said he's in line to become vice president. He wears really nice clothes, and I mean, that Rolex! Oh my god, you fell for that?! <laughs> That's all BS! And him making a million bucks a year? Come on, Miranda. You know that's a bunch of horse crap. He's only been receiving an average salary for about three months now. You really think a guy who only started working a few months ago would be making a million dollars a year? That's just downright crazy! But... that's what he told me. He was, like, dressed and... I'm sure he uses that trick on every woman he sees. Anybody can dress up nicely and wear a Rolex. Sure it wasn't a swatch? As a matter of fact, I saw him the other day. That suit and that leather briefcase he carries around? Those were obvious Chinese knockoffs. He seems pretty proud of them though, showing them off to the office girls, but they were all laughing behind his back. No way. This is not happening. Was I conned by this guy? I... I have this child. What am I going to do? Oh, that reminds me. About your folks. Now that you're back, really wish you would pay them back. Your folks still seem to be having a hard time, you know? Huh? What are you talking about? What about my parents? Pay them back for what? The settlement for that crash you caused and the money for the divorce. Nobody could get in touch with you after you signed those divorce papers and disappeared. You just withdrew all the money from your account, some of which your folks saved for you, and took off on some trip to God knows where. You were just gone. Nobody knew where you were. So, your parents paid for everything. The settlement for the accident and compensation for the divorce, which you initiated. Excuse me? Wait, what? Why the hell did you go and do that? Go and do what? It's my right. You had no job. How could you even pay? All I did was have them pay me on your behalf. Your parents were very apologetic. They were grief-stricken by the whole thing and paid up in full. The total came to $1.5 million. Excuse me? 1.5... what? Are you nuts? Yeah. Rehabilitation and therapy, renovating the house, the settlement. They put their home up for sale and any other assets they had. They even dipped into their retirement savings to pay it all off. I heard they're living in a small apartment downtown. Apparently, they're both working to pay off your debt. They said they had no choice but to try and save enough for retirement. How could you? How could you do that to my parents? Ugh, I can't believe this! Well, it's because you ran away. You dumped me, you put me in this wheelchair, you refused to nurse me back to health, and just took off. That's why. Do you really think that I wanted that? I wanted to stay married to you. I thought you would have a little remorse. I was a little reluctant to have them pay, but they were adamant about paying. They said they would make you pay them back when you returned home. They said they already sold the house and all the assets they had. I was in trouble too, as you can imagine. I couldn't walk. I needed rehabilitation. It's not cheap, you know. So they offered the settlement and I took it. It's all your fault that your folks are suffering. Think long and hard about that. But I was only... Your folks were in tears. They were furious that you took off, leaving the whole mess to them. They apologized profusely for what their daughter did. I really felt sorry for them. You really should go and see them. You simply disappeared without even apologizing. 
You better see them and start paying them back. I hate seeing them like that. It breaks my heart. How am I supposed to pay that back? It's not something I can pay back in a few months. Besides, I'm broke. I don't have that kind of money. Well, you said you're going to marry Andy. I can call him Andy, right? Have him pay for it. He makes a million annually, right? <laughs> you could pay it back in like four or five years, right? <laughs> That's impossible. Are you crazy? Besides, all he said was total BS. How can I marry a lying schmuck like that? But if you don't marry him, what are you going to do with the kid? By the looks of it, you don't have long. What the hell am I going to do? Uh, hey, Derek, could you... I mean, you haven't remarried or anything yet, right? You know, maybe we can... What I mean is... Come on, Miranda. Don't tell me you want you and me to be, like, married again. I hope you're not saying that. Sorry to say this, but I have no intention of getting back together with someone who betrayed me. And I really don't want to bring up some other guy's kid. Especially this guy. Please. I apologize for what I did. I'll do anything, so please, think it over. I'll take care of you, Derek. I'll be your nurse. Please. Uh, no thanks. I really don't need your condolences. As for nursing, I have a professional assistant doing that. So yeah, no thanks. It's not me you should be apologizing to. It's your parents. The divorce has already gone through, and the accident settlement is over with. I have nothing to do with you anymore. We're complete strangers. You guys figure the rest out, and good luck with that. Please, Derek, wait. I want nothing to do with you, so don't ever contact me with your BS again. I better go. I have work tomorrow. Good night. I heard later that she really laid into Andy after that. He confessed that all he said was one big lie, that he made the whole thing up. And the nice, spacious apartment they were living at? It turned out it wasn't his, just a monthly rental. <laughs> Apparently, they argued all night, and after they both fell asleep, he escaped and disappeared. It seems he took all the cash they had and terminated the lease on the apartment. Miranda was left dumbstruck, not knowing what hit her. She had nowhere else to go but to her parents' tiny apartment. After she had the baby, she started working various part-time jobs in order to pay her folks back and to bring up her child. As for Andy, he kept taking time off without permission and eventually got fired. Miranda's child was eventually adopted by a relative and seems to be growing up just fine. If only she had ignored me when we met that time, maybe she would have enjoyed herself a little longer. You never know, maybe things would have worked out for her? She had to go out of her way to chide me, which led to her demise. Well, I hope she comes to her senses and lives a respectable life. Maybe she'll get her kid back someday. Me? You ask? Well, I still have a lot to learn. Running a huge company is no easy task. But my uncle has given me the stamp of approval, so I don't plan to let him down anytime soon. Long time no see, Amy. Are you still alive? <laughs> Jack? Yo, what's up? What do you mean, yo? You didn't come home this Christmas again. This is the sixth year you haven't come. It's alright, even if it's just for a day. Just come visit us once in a while. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I'll visit you guys this weekend. What? Really? Does that mean you'll be living here again? Yep. But what are you going to do about work? There's no way you'll be able to commute four hours to work every day. Wait, did you change jobs? <laughs> no, that's not it. Then why? Obviously it's because I quit. <laughs> what? You quit? But didn't you graduate a famous university and get a job at a huge company? You even boasted so much when you got the job. Well, you see, I made a huge fortune investing in stocks. What? Stocks? Yep, I've gotten so good at it that I could become a day trader if I wanted. It seems that not only was I talented, I was actually a genius. Wait a minute. Huh? 
I knew you were smart, but becoming a day trader can't be that easy. Did you actually study how to trade stocks? I learned it by actually doing it. And what did you do? I started trading stocks with the market and learned on my way. That sounds pretty risky. <clears throat> yeah, but it worked out since I'm a genius. Judging by how you're talking about this, I assume you've been doing this for a while now? When did you start? Two months ago. What? Just two months? Yep, I really must be a genius if I can figure out how to trade stocks in just two months. No way. There's no way you can learn how to trade stocks in just two months. Why? Do you have experience trading stocks? No, but... Then quit trying to lecture me. But why do you have to quit your other job? It's fine. If I say it's all right, it's all right. I'm a genius, remember? If you keep bothering me, I'm not going to help you when you need any money, all right? Anyways, it's decided that you'll be returning here? Yep. I already canceled the contract with my current apartment. Got it. Your room's the same way it was six years ago when you left. So just clean it up and move in there, okay? Well, just do it for me, please, Amy. I'm pretty busy myself. It's hard to believe you when you're not even married, live in your parents' house, and don't even have a boyfriend. Shut it. You're already an adult, right? You should be able to clean up your own room. I got it. I'll be bringing my stuff on the truck this weekend, so open up a place to park for me, alright? Fine. Take care. Are you outside, Amy? I wanted to ask you for help carrying my stuff. Oh, you're already there? You had a key? Yeah, so I just opened the door and went in. Where are you? I was suddenly called to work and had to go to the office. I'll be home by evening. Is that so? Where are mom and dad? Those two are... Well, it's the usual. What do you mean? Actually, who cares? Just help me when you get home, alright? Actually, I'll probably still have to work, so I won't be able to help. You know what? You keep talking about work, but aren't you an unemployed woman living with her parents? <laughs> What? You're lying about work, aren't you? You're just killing time outside and you don't want to help me. I don't know what idea you have in your head. But it's true that I have a job, you know. What? I just work from home most of the time. I just had to go out today to talk in person to my client. What? That sounds so much like a lie. Why? You always mention how you text mom and dad. Haven't you been living at the house for the past six years ever since you quit the last company you worked for? I'm saying that it's embarrassing that my sister, who's already in her 30s, is still depending on her parents. Oh, so that's what they said about me. I'm not even unemployed. I just work from home. That's the excuse people like you always give. Anyways, the neighbors know that I work from home, so there's really no need to be embarrassed. That's just what you think. <laughs> Besides, there's no way to get a job that lets you work from home if you didn't even go to college. Things like that can only be done by people with a certain level of smarts and skills. But I do have some skills. These skills you're talking about are probably the type that no company is ever going to want. <laughs> Which is why you must actually be unemployed. Um, why do you have zero understanding for people who work from home? Aren't you younger than me? That head of yours must be getting old. Are you alright? You've got some courage saying that to me, the genius. <laughs> it's fine if you return home, just don't bother my work. Bother you? You're the one who needs to get an actual job and stop being a bother, Amy. I don't care whether you're poor and have no income. I'm not going to be lending you any of my money. I said I have a job! All right, I see how it is. I'll make some food, okay? I told you, I won't be home until evening. Seriously? I only ate instant ramen for breakfast, so I'm really hungry. Jesus. Well, it's obvious you haven't been eating well. There's some stir-fried vegetables in the fridge left over, so eat that. What? Stir-fried vegetables? How lame. 
You don't have to eat it if you don't want to. Fine. Oh, be sure to ask Dad first if you're going to drink the beer. He gets really mad if you just drink it without asking. All right. Um, Amy? Could you leave the house already? What? What's this about suddenly? I'm sick of having to pay for someone who doesn't have a job. Are you talking about me? Who else would I be talking about? <laughs> and what about you? What are you doing in your room all day? I'm checking stock values. I need to monitor the market to determine which stocks will be profitable. This is my job. Is that actually all right? Making a living off of stock trading seems even harder than working from home. It's fine. I'm a genius after all. I for one think that you should be more careful though. I said I'm fine. I'm not going to fail. I see. Well, I've got to attend a meeting, so I'll be leaving the house. There's curry in the fridge if you want something to eat for lunch. Got it. Jack, is this your doing? What is it? My stuff's outside the house. Um, yeah, that was me. Me plus mom and dad. What? I talked to mom and dad about kicking you out of the house. Since you don't even have a job of your own. They strongly agreed to my plan. We were planning on moving all your stuff outside the house while you were outside. Everything in your room's right there. What? Why you? How many times do I have to tell you that I have a job? They said to take the stuff by tomorrow morning. You better take it away as soon as possible. Oh, we changed the house keys so you won't be able to come in anymore. <laughs> so you really do want to kick me out, huh? The way you say it is a bit harsh. I just want you to become an actual adult that contributes to society, Amy. So I'm just making it so that you'll have to. What are you going to do with the house? The rent is no problem. After all, I'm a rich genius. Okay. So you really want me to leave? Yep, definitely. Oh, is it that you're in trouble since you've got no place to go? I mean, you are the person who lived off of a parent's money for the last six years. So I guess it was to be expected. Fine, I'll give you ten cents to get out of the house already, will you? <laughs> Don't come back. So does that mean you're cutting ties with me? Thanks. What do you mean by that? Why do you sound happy? Take care of him for me, will you? Oh, I don't need the 10 cents. What, what are you talking about? Bye then. Um, what? I thought you'd be more sad. Amy? <coughs> Amy! Something terrible's happened, what should I do? Um... I thought you guys cut ties with me. The value of the stocks went down in value hard! Stocks? Are you talking about the stocks you bought? Yes, it was fine until yesterday, but then suddenly... I woke up and checked the stock values and they dropped enormously! Um... Are you talking about A Engineering? What? How do you know? Haven't you been watching the news? The news? I only skimmed through an article, so I don't really know the details, but they've been talking about how there's been an incident within the company since last night. Seriously? I don't know much about stocks, but aren't stock values heavily influenced by the current situation of the company? So that's why the value suddenly dropped? Probably. Oh, what a mess. And? Why'd you contact me? Um... I forgot to block you. But stop contacting me, will you? I thought you cut ties with me. I need money! What? Things have turned into a real mess ever since the values of my stocks dropped. What do you mean? I decided to take a risk and invest a large amount of money, so I got a loan of 40k. Seriously? You're in that much debt? 
Yep, but I have no way of giving it back, so please give me some money. It seems that even though you were poor and unemployed, you got enough money to find a new house. You got some money, right? Um, I do have the money, but I'm not giving you any. What? Why should I give someone I cut ties with any money? I'll apologize for kicking you out of the house. Even if you're unemployed, you can still find a job while living at this house. How many times do I have to tell you that I'm not unemployed? Aren't you the one who needs to find a job? Huh? The rent costs 1k per month at that house. But mom and dad just spend the whole day at the casino and don't have a job, so... What? Dad doesn't have a job? You didn't know? But doesn't he leave the house in the morning every day saying he's off to work? Apparently he considers gambling a profession. What? Hey Jack, you don't know that our late grandfather and I were the ones who paid for your college tuition and not mom and dad, do you? Really? What do you mean? You see, our family depended on our late grandfather who owned his own business for money before I got a job. Once he was gone, mom and dad immediately used up all of the money they received as inheritance on gambling. I've been supporting the family since three years back. But for some reason, mom and dad still think they're living off of the inheritance money. They won't believe it when I tell them that they're living off of the money I earn working. Which is why, now that I'm gone, you'll either have to support them on your own or convince them to start working. Please come home, Amy! What? Why? It's bad enough that I lost my stocks and now in debt, but I have to support mom and dad as well. Just get a job and be enough. I have no intention of returning. Why? I'm begging you. Aren't you the one who kicked me out? I said I'll apologize. Besides, how do you plan on making a living when you don't even have a job? I'm honestly curious what kind of brain this genius who, after hearing everything I said, still believes that I'm unemployed, has. But I'm actually a freelance web designer. Huh? I'm actually pretty busy. I've got work I need to do before the deadline, so I really don't have the time to be texting you. Um, Amy? Goodbye for real this time. I found out later on from a relative as to why Jack started trading stocks. Apparently, he had a colleague who was an expert and made a huge profit after following his advice. He got hooked and bought some more stocks and was lucky enough to make another huge profit. But that was the end of his luck. He must have thought he had a talent for it and quit his old job without thinking about the future. Jack now supports mom and dad at their house with multiple part-time jobs. He's got his own debt to pay on top of that, so obviously he has no time off. Now that I'm gone, no one in that house does any housework anymore. It's basically a garbage dump now. It's a rented house, so they'll probably be kicked out. Which is what a relative said while sighing. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.